American Monsters Climber's Fungus by Zyklin Strange to call a sedentary fungus a monster, but in the northwest of the United States such a monster exists. Deep in the wilderness of towering redwoods and fiery rocky mountain maples, locals whisper of a muddy tract of land carved between two ridges. You'll only find the climber's fungus in an area about the size of three football fields. Their biological range is tiny. Animals and birds avoid the fungus, and any who consume it don't make it too far from the source. It starts with a stomach ache. You may vomit, but the spores have already grasped onto the lining of your stomach. Nausea comes soon after, causing you to stop and rest frequently along your frantic journey towards civilization. Your muscles grow heavy. Your joints stiffen. What's that pounding in your skull? Could all of this really be the demonic work of that mushroom you just scarfed down off the side of a tree? It was waxy and bulbous, and gave off an earthy sweet smell, like fine truffles. In fact, you can smell them now. That meaty molasses-like aroma that's clogged in your nostrils. You only had one mushroom cap, but your vision is blurring, and the world is becoming dim. You've only managed to make it, what? A hundred or two yards from the tree where you innocently picked the climber's fungus? The air is heavy. Your arms are heavy. Your legs are heavy. Every step feels like you're sinking into the sludge of the ground below you. Darkness encroaches at the edges of your vision. Your feet can only carry you another few steps before you collapse against a tree and pray you don't lose consciousness. But then, light. Bright light, like heavenly fire glowing down from the treetops. Its warmth tingles on your clammy skin. It breathes the fresh air into your lungs, and the burden on your shoulders lightens to the weight of a feather. Your bones weigh nothing. Neither do your muscles. Every ounce of you is drawn upwards. You're a balloon caught in an updraft, and the beautiful light from above is calling you towards it. You grab the nearest tree and begin to climb, up and up towards the canopy. Every new hand holds you secure, letting that brilliant glow wash over you like cresting waves. Soon, Leaves tickle your cheeks. It grows harder to climb, because the branches way up there are so thin and flimsy. But you press on, addicted, obsessed with this divine radiance, hiding itself so coyly just above the treetop. Finally, your head bursts into the open air, and you tilt your head towards the sun, and salty tears stream down your cheeks. This is the light. This is paradise. This is as far as you will ever remember. Next, I'll tell you how your body is found. Some hikers will spot your corpse way up in the canopy, swaying in the wind. White knuckles clutched onto the thinnest branches, and they wonder how you haven't fallen down. Your face is calcified, and hardly a face at all. Your cheeks and forehead and neck have been jellified and sapped of any nutrients they could offer. Your mouth is gaping, jaw stretched wider than a normal human's threshold for pain would allow. Your gut is distended. A fungal sac has cultivated in your stomach and rooted its network of mycelium all throughout your small intestines. One long stalk protrudes upwards through your esophagus up past your glottis, and nests right in your mouth, where a platinum mushroom cap has risen from between your jagged teeth and spread itself in the sun. This is the second stage of the climber's fungus life cycle, the reproductive stage. Soon, that cap will bloat up, all lumpy and slick, packed to the brim with spores. One hot afternoon, and pop! The growth ruptures, and Climus fungus's spores rain down from the canopy, 
coating tree trunks with their newest generation. What becomes of you next doesn't matter. Maybe a strong wind will finally dislodge you from the treetops. Maybe you'll become a bloody buffet for the scavenging birds. Or maybe your body will stay in the treetops forever, slowly withering, your mouth hanging open, and your burnt out eye sockets gazing at the sun. Thank you for watching today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed the second part of the series. As always a big shout out to Zyklin for actually writing the singer giving me the permission to use it. It's fantastic. If you like the video yourself, please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to click the little cogwheel next to the subscribe button, that will give you notifications of when my next video is out later on in the week. If you have a story or creepy experience that you want to share with me yourself, or you just want to uh, speak to me normally like on social media, make sure you follow all of them, they're down in the description box below. And until next time, sleep tight.